when you transfer files, make sure to use the dedicated USB. Looks like this. MLA 100 plus 5150. It says maskless and E5 do not remove. Sometimes it disappears to a different room, but it's very clear that it should stay here. Transfer the file to this USB stick by one of the normal computers. The MLA computer does not have access to the internet because uh, we don't want virus attacks and uh, hacker attacks. So you can just put the USB in here and then transfer the data. The first thing we have to do is look at these three icons, hints, MLA, the sign shortcuts, and the manuals and the MLA 150 guide. So whenever you come to this computer, just start on the hint MLA. If it's already started, just restart it because there can be some laggy issues if um, it's idling for too long. When the software is started, we have a, a drop-down menu here in the upper left corner. The main screen is divided into different, different um, sections. Up here in the upper left corner, we have an agenda showing what steps we should do. Set up job, load substrate, expose job, and an exposed job is both the first exposure alignment, series goal mode, and inspection. We are only choosing one of these. Here is exposure information. We'll come back to that later. It will show a lot of the different information that we have during this exposure. If we need to expose alignment crosses, we have this panel here that shows the position of the crosses that are to be exposed. You could either put them in your design or ask this machine to do an actual uh, cross exposure for you. If we're doing second exposure, so we do alignment, then we can see here the positions of the crosses. This will be covered in another video. Over here, we'll have the progress information. Before the exposure, we'll uh, see that it's filled out and come back to it. In the top right corner, we have the hardware information. We have uh, position, we'll come back to that when we move around in the alignment. We have a status, DMD, digital mirror device, that's the heart of the instrument. Everything here should be okay, except for the right hat, it should be initialized every time we restart the software. If it's standing for okay for too long, just restart the software and start it again. DMD, interferometer, window, stage, camera, laser, and conversion should all be okay before we start. In the numeric values, there's a lot of information, but most is not used by the users. Two things we're looking for is the air pressure. It's off when we use optical um, outflows, and it has a value when we do chromatic outflows. Then there's the DMD voltage, it should be above 5 volts. If it becomes lower, then it will, uh, you need to tell a nanolab employee so we can uh, look at the instrument because it can potentially not harm the instrument. Laser wavelength is written down here, 375 nanometers. We can also change it to 405. It only takes a couple of minutes. In the main section down here, we have the setup job. Heidelberg is always making yellow paints like this, where they're describing exactly what to do. So number one here, for example, is in the job section, load a job or enter the name for a new job and select the exposure mode. Let's start here. So in the job section, we have a green pane, and then down here in the substrate, we have an orange pane. Whatever is orange is mandatory, whatever is green is uh, optional, so you can decide to change. So here we can change the name if we want to. Right now it's just called job, with a capital J, underscore, and then a number, and this number in, is increasing every time we change something in the software. Over here, <coughs> we have an exposure mode. When we click the drop down menu, we can select standard, series, draw mode, or inspection mode. I'll cover these in different uh, videos. For now, we'll just talk about the standard. If we put a lot of parameters into the software and did not want to use them, wanted to restart, we can just press new job. If we are doing exactly the same again, like say doing three different wafers with the same exposure, then we can press restart job, then all the parameters we select is reused. If this job is going to be exposed in a week or a month, we can do save job, remember this name, and then load that specific job. Unfortunately, we delete these jobs quite often because they 
the files are quite large, up to 100 gigabytes or more. So right now we're not really using save and load. Yes, sir. So first, we just give it a name. Right now we just call it this job name. So second, substrate. Choose a substrate template or shape. So down here in the substrate, we have an orange pane. If we double click this one, a library looking something like this opens. So up here in the top, we can, for example, see an automatic rectangular, automatic round, automatic rectangular with pneumatic autofocus. You can see the autofocus mode out here, pneumatic, automatic round pneumatic. Then we have something called large and small. We have a lot called mask, which we don't use. Then <clears throat> Thomas and I has made this one called Tara. It's for special applications. And then down here we have wafers, two inch, three inch, and four inch with pneumatic. Yeah. So if we're using a two, three, four inch, we can choose any of these down here. If we need pneumatic mode, we have only made for the four inch. Otherwise, we can use either the automatic round pneumatic or automatic rectangular pneumatic if pneumatic is needed. Why to choose pneumatic or optical, I will make a, in a different video or a little bit later. If we're doing small chips, bits and pieces, we normally use automatic rectangular or large or small, depending on which size they are. For now, we just take the 4-inch optical and press load. The substrate has been selected, it tells us it's round and it has a diameter of 100 millimeters. The thickness is approximately 0.5 millimeters. Uh, even if you have a thin wafer, 200 microns, or a very thick one of a millimeter, it should not matter at all. The machine can take up to 12 millimeter substrates uh, and even very thin ones as well. The next section is the layer. Select the layer to expose in the chosen layer. Select the laser wavelength and load or create a design for overlay exposure and load alignment template. Okay. So down here in the layer, we have the first exposure. If we click Add Layer, we'll get a new line that's called Layer 2. This is for alignment purposes, and I'll uh, cover this in a later video. So right now we just delete this layer. We only need the first exposure for our first exposure, uh, first layer for our first exposure. We can select the laser wavelength. Here we can select 375 or 405. In general, it's mainly depending on the sensitivity of the resist that you're using. But we recommend people to use 375 for most uh, purposes because it resembles the 365 we have in other uh, aligners. So let's choose the 375. Then we need to look at the, our design. I'll come back to that in a second. Everything that is gray will be filled out with information like here, except this one, expose cross. I'll cover this one in a different video, but here you can select where to put your own alignment marks uh, or have the machine make some for you and put them in a specific place. Let's jump over to the resist. So here, when we double click resist, again, we'll not make a full library of every single resist and every single thickness we can have. So right now we only have these five. One thing to mention is if you select, for example, the MIR or the 5214E, the only thing that will change is the dose that we have measured to be the right one. So you can always change to those later. It's not a necessity to choose the uh, resist, but I just wanted to cover some of the possibilities that are in here. So we have one here called NLAP, Large Defocus Range. When we look at the exposure, we are doing something about defocusing. I'll come back to that a little bit later. later. But if we need a larger range, so normal standard is from plus minus 10, and here we can do plus minus 25. It's also written out here in the description, defocus plus minus 25. You have to have a special training for this if you need it, because there are some issues around the large defocus range where it doesn't work all the time. What you can also choose is this one, in lab, high aspect ratio, mode, large. That means we have an aperture, motorized aperture, that we can change. So in this case, the Change it to approximately uh, remove 70% of the light. This is to very thick resist. So as you can see out here, the dose factor is approximately a factor of seven higher. So we need to have a higher dose. It takes longer time to expose, but the sidewalls become more vertical at very thick resist. If you have an extremely thick resist, let's say 100 micrometer issue 8, 
And sometimes you don't want a pyramid, but you want a cylinder. In that case, you can either use the large or the extra large mode. Again, high aspect ratio, mode extra large. In this case, it is um, limited to 95%. So we have a dose factor of approximately 19. So it takes a very long time to expose anything uh, in this way. But we can get some very critical side points. So we select the recipe in, uh, that we are using for today. In this case, 5214. Let's say load. When we need to convert the design, which we need to do almost every time we do an exposure, we double click on the design here. If your design is already converted, you can select it here. So for example, we could select Heidelberg test chip if we need this one and just click load. But for most cases, these are deleted uh, once a month. So in most cases, if you have a new design or uh, if the design is deleted, we need to click convert design. Patience is a virtue. It will come up here in the upper left corner. You can either use the drop down menus to say file, new job, or just click this one for a new job. If we leave everything up here in the upper left, right, upper left corner, we can see the job name from before up here. That makes life a little bit easier. So now, we just change the job name to the same number as we have out here. Please don't give it a different number, let's say 01, because then you might delete something that somebody else is exposing. Let me just click OK. Now we can choose which type of file to import. So here the source file is our design. Even though we click here, nothing happens, so we can click Add. This machine can do either SIF, DXF, DX, GTS2, or GAPA files. Some people have made a folder like this. As for now, the software can handle to open it in a folder, but I recommend just to, to put your files out here because there is a chance or risk that it cannot open from the folder. We had that on uh, the MA100 earlier. So now we can just go to whatever structure we want to expose. So in this case, hyper test chip. Just open it. We'll have a list of different layers. Right now, we only have one layer, so we can select or deselect it. We click create default to uh, just give it the default name as uh, we have in our design. So let's click create default. So now you can see the source file and the hint file are both called Heidelberg test chip and Heidelberg test chip. If we, for some reason, need to remove this design and find another one, we can click remove and then just add a new one. Or we can click options and we can come back into this pane again. Remember to override if there is any change. When we have loaded the design, it's a very good idea to use the viewer just to see if the design looks as it should. So the design looks something like this. When we have selected the source file and then by, thereby created a hint file, there's a lot of parameters down here that we can select. So in the first top left corner, we have exposure mode. It is high per default set to fast, which I recommend everybody to start at. We go for change to high quality. It takes longer time, obviously. You don't get higher resolution, but you get smoother sidewalls and uh, you also get less, less stitching. So I always do three uh, sanity checks. So the first one is when you have selected your design, check that you have the right structure and the right layer. To so double check it, click the viewer then you see that it's the, it should be the right size or the right design and the right cells, the right layers. And the third sentence check is down here. So it has a size. And if this size is something else than you predicted or thought it should be, then maybe you selected a different design or only one layer or only one cell. So that's why I always check them so I get the right exposure. When we have checked that the boundaries look correct. We can here see that it is symmetrical around the origin. That means our center of our design, the metrical center, is in 0, 0.0. If that was not the case, we could change it by using place down here. So in this case, if we say position preview, 
could now see that we get a preview of a 100 by 100 millimeter mask. That is what the machine is just set for standard to show. That means it resembles a four inch pipe well, four inch wafer. So in the center here, we would have our design, 10 millimeters in X, five millimeters in Y. If I take automatic centering out over here, nothing will happen. But if we then gave it a offset, let's say 30 millimeters to the right and 30 millimeters up, then our design is placed up here instead. So if this is important, because if the design was not geometrically centered, or let's say you have a design that has two different layers, they don't necessarily need to have the same geometrical center, then when you're trying to align these, they would not be aligned unless you know what you're doing. So either make sure that you always just say placement zero zero, or that you always use automatic centering. But in that case, you might need to introduce, for example, a small, just one by one nanometer dot in all four corners of all the layers of your design. Then you know that the geometrical center will be the same in layer one, two, three, and so forth. When we're done with the conversion, you just click complete tasks, then it will create a job folder with the same name as our job. Just click save here. Most jobs is almost instantaneous, but very large files can take a little while. Just wait until it says done at 100%. You can click finish and that was the conversion. When we are done with the conversion, we come back to this library pane. If for some reason the new job was not updated, we can just click refresh. And then you can see that our job is up here in the top. When it's selected, then you can just click reload. Now we come back to this screen. Now we have set up the laser, we have set up the design, and we have set up our assist template. Now we can just click reload software. When we are ready to build the substrate, the machine actually gives us again the zero pane and tells us exactly what to do. So first, we should open the window, then we should place the substrate on the stage center position, then we should activate the vacuum and check uh, the substrate to fixation, close the window and press continue. The machine even tells us that we should pay attention to the substrate or wafer orientation on the stage, and that's because it's turned 90 degrees so when we are loading, we have to put the flat towards the left side of the machine. First, we can open the door by the red button. Take a sample and place in the center. Use this red utility device to center it. The backside ridge goes into this groove. We can then select to place it as a two inch. 3 inch, 4 inch, 5 inch, 6 inch. Then remember that the y direction is this way and x is this way, so the major flat is pointing to the left of the machine. Like this. When we have to turn on the vacuum, we click this button. Red means there is no vacuum, the red, red value up here. We can remove this utility tool. It has a small red dial down here, so the machine will not start as long as there is an alignment tool placed on the stage. When we turn on the vacuum, we can now check the fixation. Everything is also described up here if you forget how to use it. We can now close the door. The sample is in the center. This is especially important for small substrate like kits. What we're doing is we will check from over here, and we have a small red reflection. It can be very difficult to show on the video, but if we have a reflection, then the laser diode is shining on the surface and reflects because it does not reflect the same way on the, the stage. One thing to bear in mind is this big red dot that is our overview camera position. It's not that when we're looking for. When making sure that the substrate is underneath the right head, then we can just click continue and then it uh, starts to focusing on the substrate. If you look at the camera window, then you can see that we see some colors, and then it starts searching for the edges, and now you can see that it goes on outside the edges. The x-axis, the y-axis, the diagonals, and then at the end it will also check the major flat. 
this way it knows exactly where the wafer is positioned and in rotated on the stage. So we can use all this information for centering our device and also rotating our designs according to the plan. After we've done the loading, we come to the actual exposure screen unless we're doing uh, alignment. So for first exposure, it looks something like this. As I told in the beginning, we have the agenda up here. And now see we have been through setup job, we've been through low, low structure and substrate, and are now in the process of exposure jobs. In this case, it's first exposure. In the exposure info, we can see the job name, see which number it is, and see the size of our substrate, the height. This is always rounded up to so 0.5 something, will be 0.6. In this case, the design name was the same as the job name, but here you can sometimes see it's a uh, uh, source file name, so you can see it's the right file. It's the first exposure, it's still binary, we're not doing grayscale lithography. The design size, this is the third sanity check, just double check that the size correlates with what you think it should be. You're writing a fast exposure, not high quality, it's still a very good quality, don't worry. Then we give it a dose and improve focus. If you look out here in the left corner, on the left side, sir, then we can see the light source and the dose. I recommend that we increase the dose a little bit so that we overexpose. This is primarily to remove any stitching, but of course the structure will be a little bit larger, but this can be, be taken into account in the other part. Then we have the defocus values from minus 10 to plus 10. Here, the best thing you can do is select the value that most people use in the logbook or make a series of uh, defocus, uh, sorry, dose and defocus series so you can check it for yourself for your design. Out here, we have something called expose to substrate angle. Whenever you place a substrate on the chuck, even though you use the alignment tools, it will have some sort of rotation. On the top, if we were to expose our own crosses, not from the design, the positions would be put here. If we we're doing alignment, the information would be put here. I'll cover this in the next video. Then the progress information here, we can now see that the machine is ready. It will, uh, it only has one array, so one design out of one. It's divided into 126 stripes and it takes, in this case, one minute to expose. And the hardware information, everything down here is okay. Also the right hand, that's because we loaded the substrate. That is how it should be. And out here we can now see that the chuck vacuum is a value. And then uh, the substrate is fixated. Up here in the right corner, we are now at 0, 0 0.0. So we're in the center of our uh, substrate. If we, for some reason, want to move the route, then we can use the navigation buttons out here double check that everything is as it should be, we can click start exposure. When we do so, up here at the progress info, the progress bar starts here to run, and it writes converting. After it's done converting, it will write converting slash exposing, and when it's all done, it will only write exposing, and then the remaining time will be uh, correct. When we're done with the exposure, it will say exposure finished. We want to unload the substrate. If you click yes, the substrate chuck will come out. If you say no, then you can uh, do another exposure if needed, or you can always unload later. The exposure is completed and you uh, unloaded the substrate, and you come back to this screen. What you can see is now that the status is changed to exposed. It shows which dose we ran, which defocus, and how long term it took. This should be put into the logbook. It also shows the angle that has been used and which stages has been exposed.